Hi guys, it's Evelyn from Twin Flames 3344. I have some messages for you this morning. I'll give you some important messages first and then I'll go into Divine Masculine read from last night, Divine Feminine from this morning, and I also have my sand art. So I'm going to show you the pictures first of the two reads. This is the Divine Masculine read from last night. Okay, and then from this morning to the Divine Feminine. Alright, so um, first before I get started, I do. there's one really important message that I was thinking of just putting out real quickly last night, but I didn't. Um, and this was within the Divine Masculine read, so I'll get more into that read. But the specific message was in reference to this light. Um, I literally got a message in my codes from the Divine Masculine last night. It was 808. Um, in seven nights... Jesus' fire portal, the hour of crystalline changes. So I was getting seven nights from last night. So whoever that resonates with, um, if it doesn't, um, then just disregard it. But um, I was feeling it as very important, and that comes out to be um, September 26th to 27th, around there. I'm going to tell you my sand art real quick, and then we'll get into the read. So the sand art was done at like 1 a.m. last night. <coughs> um, and so it, here it goes. It was very elaborate, actually. It was interesting because the first thing I see was like the top of like a an, a beaded gown, not something modern, but something that would have been very elaborate, like oh god, I don't know, in the eighteen hundreds or something. Very um, you know, cut out and elaborate and beaded. And I may be getting my timelines wrong, but it wasn't uh, current dress. But it was just the top of it. Then, I saw a baby whale eating a fish the same size as the baby whale. And then I saw fish kissing. Then I see a wound, that wounded fish surrounded by the Grim Reaper on either side. And then two bigger fish eating the wounded fish. And they were at war, you know, tugging and competing for the fish. And then a bat with wings spread wide on a mountaintop. The bat loses its wings as ghosts of those it consumed are released from its control. Then the finger, his own, points at him as the wolves turn on him. The wolves become joined and the finger becomes an octopus and detaches from the wolves. The finger becomes an octopus and detaches from the wolves bite, retreating to heal. As a dolphin comes up between them to protect him, the wolf calmed by the dolphin, and since connected to the other wolves, calms them too. So that was pretty profound as far as, um, it was definitely coming up for me for the Divine Masculine, okay? So first him, um, he's attacking himself, and so because he's doing that, he's drawing in the wolves. But the dolphin, the dolphin comes in, could represent the divine feminine or just some a friend who's who's a calming factor in the situation to calm the one wolf who in turn sends a ripple effect to the others so let me know how that resonates with you and i'm going to get right into the reads so yesterday um, at 808 with the divine masculine read it was september 19th yesterday And uh, the major arcana were the hangman, um, justice, and strength for the divine masculine. And in this, um, it's the Syrian star seed is the main deck used, and that's the hanging man as opposed to the hanged man in this deck. Justice is justice, and strength is strength. Um, there were three wands, four pentacles, and one sword. And no cups. The only court cards were the Knight of Pentacles and the King of Swords. 
The numbers that came up in the coding were 7, 3, and 10, as well as 77 and 341. And again, like I said, the, the code that came up for me was basically that the Divine Feminine inside the Divine Masculine is good at transmutation and part-time manifesting change. Okay. Um, yeah, and then, in, like I said, in Seven Nights, Jesus' Fire Portal, the Hour of Crystalline Changes. So that was very significant. And also, some of the things that came up when I just input it real quick, just to see what would come up. Uh, one of the things that came up was read God of Slaughter, Chapter 39, and it had to do with three types of flames. And then it went in, there was another entry that described the three of flames from the Syrian starseed deck that I was using, um, which described the three of flames as, un, you know, part of it was unbridled potential when you are open. So for the Divine Masculine yesterday, or last night, um, the wounded warrior is the underlying energy, allows his inner passion to be exposed. And underneath the wounded warrior was the Knight of Wands trying to come out and keeping his eye on the Divine Feminine, okay? Stuck emotions of coming together, not balanced, and in, in lack of his worth. Bleeding out in loss and regret, the King of Swords offers love, guarded with truth. He drops the facade of detachment, and then the card comes up very soon. There's a narcissist coming up in the read, is out watching as the magician shocks with possible divorce or some kind of um, shocking news, could be legal as well. Um, the card spirituality comes up for the Divine Masculine. And I was getting, the, instead of Batman, I was getting the Bat Devil peeks out, very unhappy, dumping things he doesn't really love to be more independent and to stop conflict. So there's some kind of a break in contract or commitment or a divorce that has drained him. And at this full moon, he gets justice as the king of swords. Or also the justice card comes up, so it could be Libra energy, but also could be Libra with a lawyer, emotionally depleted, yet ready to offer love. The foundation is still coming up with a right knee block, so the Divine Masculine is not releasing the anger from his right knee, which is his masculine side. Um, and like I said before, this has been helping me in tending the, um, this energy uh, trick from Energy Medicine by Don Eden. Putting your hands on your thighs and just going, but use your intention of pushing all that energy down your, um, your energy column and out. And you do it with your hands on your thighs and then you bring your arms up over your head and with your fist inward and, and pull down as you do the shh again. And then you bend over forward at the waist and do it again and then back to standing with your hands on your thighs and do it again. But that's a, an anger release. So the energy medicine book talks about the shh and the, and the positions, but I'm saying to use your intention as you're doing this, to push the anger down your chakra column and out. And it's actually helping with some of my pain. So for the divine, any divine masculines who are watching who might have knee pain, you know, try this. But also focus your attention on your knee to see what it brings up. Either it will help release the pain or it will bring up something for you to deal with. Okay, and it keeps coming up um, day after day for the divine masculine right now, the right knee pain. So do something about it. Okay, you need to let go of that pain. Okay. So, and also this is after, a, some have been through a long battle or conflict, and obviously this right knee pain has to do with that, but it's from holding back their truth. They need to not um, be so diplomatic and nice with everyone and speak their truth whether it's harsh or not, if it hurts other people's feelings, that's their wound to heal, not yours. If you're in your truth and you're being kind about it, as kind as you can be, that's all you need to be. The truth is never wrong. The Queen of Swords is talking about 
um, holding on loosely. So maybe um, there's a karmic partner who just wants to just see how it goes. Um, maybe, you know, we'll work it out, that kind of thing. Or it even could be the Divine Feminine, just taking it day by day with the Divine Masculine. So the center of the Divine Masculine read is Prisoner of Love in the Divine Feminine's heart, his heart and dreams are the center of the issue. But the challenge of pain cycles of the Queen of Pentacles and coming out of the dark with the Queen of Wands sitting there waiting for him to manifest more money that he's holding for the Queen of Pentacles. Now the, the Knight of Pentacles has heaven in his eyes. So, and the Knight of Pentacles is all about the workhorse, right? So having heaven in his eyes about work, um, regarding an Empress connection to the King of Swords, not going forward, waiting and reaping instead of going forward. Now fighting is over. He's like, oh, now I don't have to do anything. I can just kind of sit back on my laurels, right? His dreams of giving equally and putting his butt on the line for his twin, longing and expressing feelings back and forth, soon clinging to separation at work and hearing the calls of passion. The King of Swords rushing in, now the worst is over, to confess his wrongdoing. And the cards that came up were Honeymoon, um, getting to know each other, and this could be the one. And Honeymoon could just be enjoying time away, okay, in, in bliss. Around the Divine Masculine, rising above to start over, but stuck in jealousy. So this could be people around him in his immediate environment or the Divine Feminine, who could also be around him in his environment. He needs to clear blocks of strength and or a Leo, this Queen of Wands who keeps coming up, and the Magician, which is manipulation, as the power behind the throne. Okay, so he needs to learn to let go of the block of thinking that this Queen of Wands is the power behind the throne, when actually She's draining him, manipulating him, and he's the power himself. He needs to know that about himself and believe in his own worth. So the cards come up change, and more importantly, manifestation, that the Divine Masculine has the, his own ability to manifest. He doesn't need the Queen of Wands. He only needs himself. He is the power behind his own throne, is the point. Okay. So... Change and manifestation of the 5D world obsession. I think I said page. What did I write? He's the man, he's the man who of passion, who has turned his back on real love, now offers his manhood, basically, for a new life. His heart suddenly, as he breaks out of the shadow and into the present moment, the wounded warrior who hung himself, the king of swords, rising above justice, to the divine feminine heart burdens at work with a strong offer in exchange for his heart and his shadow. Okay, and that was it for the divine, that read for the divine masculine last night. And I'm gonna go into today And actually, I had a really good meditation last night. And um, I was actually seeing, um, I was really working on my, um, my galactic travel and connecting up there, which I don't do all the time. I ground a lot. But um, as soon as I went into uh, the Stargate, where I see, where I see the sky and all the stars, 
Um, usually I just see stars and I go out and I can astral travel that way. But um, last night after doing more work, um, as soon as I went into the Stargate, I had like four or five um, big white lights just come right at me. And it didn't happen after that. It was only the initial entry. So that was kind of interesting. And in the meditation I'd done this week also, I, the first thing I saw in that meditation was a um, like an altar that was like an eth etheric pillar. You know, so it was made of light. It wasn't made of, you know, it wasn't like a, a solid substance. It was a pillar altar. But I also saw like a bald eagle that was etheric as well, all white. It was very etheric. So I don't know if they connect, but they were connecting for me. And when I did my thing last night, I looked at the clock, right? When I, I don't usually stay awake for the whole thing. I usually fall asleep, but I actually was awake the whole for the whole hour. And when I looked at the clock, it was 2.22. All right, so today for the Divine Feminine. And as soon as I started putting the cards out, for the main read, which was at 8.28, I got, again, ground control to Major Tom. So that was John's song again. Um, and I was humming it over and over and over again. Ground control to Major Tom. Um, for the Divine Feminine, the, the Major Arcana were Luna and Star, which is the moon and the star. There were two cups, three swords, three wands, and one pentacle. Um, the court cards were the Queen of Swords, the Knight of Cups, and the Page of Swords. And the numbers that came up in the codes were 6, 10, 16, which is the tower, and then 33, 10, 10 also came up, as well as 2, 3, 3, 1. Um, so within the coding, it was all about forgiveness today and a lot of forgiveness of self. So it's forgiveness of both. And this is actually, the forgiveness was on both parts, the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. They're so intertwined right now, it's really you know, usually about both. But that specifically in this read was coming up for both of them. Um, and what I was getting as far as the coding, and Sagittarius was coming up in the coding, but um, it's really about being tested in your emotions. I was getting some different versions um, there c and 10 comes up as the family, right? So, and the Sagittarius was being associated with the family. So it was like six seeing 10 in the Sagittarian family in emotions due to inadequate support and in need of forgiveness. Also, the collective consciousness of the twins see tense aged test of emotions about judgment and forgiveness also um, sexy was coming up as far as 10 and the wheel but also being that vibration that high vibration of feeling sexy right when you're feeling really good about yourself and again it was coming up of Sagittarius in the in the department of the heart the area of the heart but also the t-square was coming up I know there's been some T-squares this month, which, you know, are oppositions. They cause friction in need of forgiveness here, okay? And also, six Satan, saged test of emotions crossed and having to do with forgiveness as well. So using sage, but also sage is just another way of saying to keep yourself clear. You know, you're being tested on your emotions, so make sure you clear and protect yourself every day when it comes to love, which is six. Um, also, the sixth sense came up. And some of the, and when I put the uh, code in just to see what would come up, there's nothing really mu that interesting to me. Um, the first thing that came up was the official site of the Tennessee Titans, which is funny because I was born in Tennessee. But um, something else that came up, you know, SAG awards, things like that were coming up, and six flags, but also the six girls you'll date in college. But most importantly, I was getting from this was six cents just came up, okay? 
So for the Divine Feminine. Um, and it was a little bit um, daunting today, but uh, coming together after manifesting impatience and the King of Pentacles reverse, so someone who's ungrounded or has lost money and status, or it can be just a greedy person, um, trying to keep the peace, okay? So I was getting this energy coming from more the Divine Masculine, okay? As the underlying energy that the Divine Feminine is feeling. There's conflict out as polarity consciousness of black and white pillars of light bridge with an olive branch as angel lovers are out in the cold, but at least they're together. Unhappy and so implementing new passion and disconnecting from lack of consciousness. The card came up, express your love, the Divine Feminine. And that's for everyone, okay? And the full moon is out encouraging um, people, you know, like usual, to dress up and go out drinking and have sex and all that kind of stuff. So this energy is coming out very much so at the full moon. It's that one-on-one -on -one relationship energy, right? And then I was getting um, palm trees set the stage for twins to return. And I was getting Palm Beach, Florida, for some reason. That came up, Palm Beach, Florida. And actually, Florida came up first, as soon as I saw Palm, and then Palm Beach, Florida came up. So these palm trees set the stage for twins to return in the fall. And then I was seeing a park where socks are hanging from a branch of a tree, and pigeons are at your feet. And actually, when I saw the pigeons at my feet, it reminded me of being in the south of France, when we were at, uh, there's a castle that's a mall there. That, you know, everything's outside. Um, but I, I was sitting there on the bench with lots of pigeons running around, so it kind of reminded me of that. Um, personal growth comes up for the Divine Feminine as the underlying energy, okay, personal growth. Um, the Divine Feminine, defenseless. To a greedy partner, an ungrounded or greedy partner, the Queen of Pentacles reversed, the King of Pentacles who's up right now, so this is not the same energy that was underlying. I was getting that the King of Pentacles is defenseless to this ungrounded Queen of Pentacles reversed, who could be a greedy partner, who's having temper tantrums at the full moon. After the Hermit, or it could be possible Virgo energy, sheds light on a third party at work. Fighting and disconnect and going on to bring the, the uh, twins together at the full moon. The foundation of this read for the Divine Feminine this morning was um, a bold move and travel without having faith or being foolish brings a message or news of, or immature communication of being pulled out of the cold due to feeling beat up due to an emotional affair or a breakup, okay? So again, there's some kind of bold move or travel. So there's a couple different scenarios here. There's a bold move or travel without faith or just being foolish, okay? That, or bringing a message or news or immature communication of being put out in the cold due to a breakup, due to an emotional affair. Or it could be gossip as well. Um, centrally, I was getting Sagittarius energy but it's also air sign because it's the queen of swords coming up in the center of the reed as the issue. But there, I was def, I don't always get her in mourning, but I was definitely getting um, a couple different scenarios here. Um, and I was definitely getting as the karmic, the queen of swords in the center, not as the twin, but as the karmic. Um, I was getting this as Sagittarius energy, possibly. It's not, they're not all Sages, but that was the main energy coming up today. But in mourning after... Um, sneakiness and planning a new life, feeling loss and regret as Angel is married and challenged by the Knight of Cups detoxing 
and coming the way of the Divine Feminine to get the Divine Feminine to talk of the full moon and and release after he's released his marriage. So, so that will be one situation. Um, the cards came up, came up getting to know each other, free yourself, and finances and career for the Divine Feminine. So make sure to free yourself. Take control back of your life and focus on your finances and career. Or finances and career may be affecting your love life is actually from the Romance Angels and getting to know each other. So I'm also getting the center Queen of Swords is that she, this is someone who's pissed bringing attention to the detox of the Knight of Cups. So there may be a Divine Masculine who de who's detoxing and since she's pissed at him, she's making it public. So she'll humiliate him. I was also getting um, in the heart and head of the Divine Feminine healing dreams of Egypt and Atlantis where the karmic stole the Divine Feminine's lover and turned him into a dark zombie who now has had to let go of his illusions and dreams to find his way back after sexual frustration and tantrums of not being in his truth and now coming full circle with an Aquarius energy okay so now I'm getting Aquarian and Sagittarius for the karmics who are wounded in mourning okay she is the wounded warrior so Sag or Aquarius or both protecting her marriage from a third party at the full moon manifesting him to be returned to her in peace soon the switch as he refuses to return to the Sag and I was getting this as, a, as someone who's like a show-offy energy or superficial woman to stay with independent, with his own independence or with an independent woman who has been carrying his burdens of injustice, unable to express feelings of her knowing or being illuminated. The divine feminine is in union. After moving forward to clean up her own lack mentality, which is now behind her, around her, she has a dysfunctional family. Finally, and this could be the Divine Masculine's family, or it could be her family in her environment. So it could be either one. But a dysfunction, dysfunctional family is coming up, finally ending the mental war of unrequited love and loss of possible family money. The Divine Feminine needs to clear blocks of the burden of the Divine Masculine always offering love to his family before her. This is her, her perspective on this, okay? She also needs to clear blocks of depression and being in that mental prison of rejection and or shyness. Like I said, forgiveness comes up as the main um, advice for the read. She also has to give up um, blocks about basically being addicted to justice and getting self-satisfaction. This was coming up for actually both the Divine Mass and, and Divine Feminine. That in trying to balance addiction with self-love between the twin and the self. Seeking justice causes the imbalance and that both have to realize that some things will just never be fair. So do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? So there's no point in seeking justice. There's only a point in seeking your own happiness. Okay, that's justice. Do you want to be happy for the rest of your life or do you want to fight for justice and be miserable for the rest of your life? Is that justice? No, your happiness is the justice. So it doesn't matter if you're right. Staying present and seeking the light by seeking the beauty that you are, expressing burdens in order to release and find your own satisfaction, even offering love to your family, who you may have had conflict with. Recovering independence of third party burdens or overindulgence of pain and pain cycles through physical expression and happiness using your psychic abilities to find clarity in indecisiveness and lack of sexual expression using your abilities to walk away and go within so the answer is always to use your abilities okay your own knowing so coming together with message of union from family at the full moon with Queen of Swords in mourning. So there's this different scenarios I was getting about this where someone's, there may be a miscarriage, okay? Because I'm definitely getting a child and it was attached to the Aquarius energy. 
It was uh, an air sign woman, though, and Sag and Aquarius were coming up, and it, the Page of Swords was below that, okay? So it's definitely getting someone has a miscarriage. It also can be um, someone who's miscarriage, who's Knight of Cups or their partner, not knowing, it doesn't have to be the masculine or feminine, it could just be someone in your family, but it could also be the karmic and the divine masculine, or it could be the divine masculine and divine feminine who are together. But the divine masculine in this situation, not understanding the burden of being in the light and staying present with your abilities, especially if you're in loss, okay? Especially in this experience like miscarriage, which is very personal to the divine feminine, nobody else can really understand what she's going through. This Queen of Swords experiences a loss, this miscarriage, or it could be a loss of marriage, it could be a loss of something else, it could be a death of a family member. And it was very much about family in this read and celebrations. So in the first row, so the, the underlying energies were all about family celebrations, messages and news, driving, traveling, um, and moving was foolish. So I was getting that for some, and there may even be a miscarriage where now she's angry with herself for maybe moving or driving a long distance, something maybe she shouldn't have done that, that might have caused the miscarriage, but someone just kicking herself, which she doesn't need to do, but she's blaming herself. In the second row, I was getting uh, about the full moon being in mourning. So this is happening at the full moon or around the full moon. Full moon more in mourning, but also love I'm feeling blind and burdened, not seeing, need, feeling like you need more information. But also I was getting, for some, some, some are feeling freed by whatever happens here, that dream, the dreams now are without limits. And so maybe someone had gotten pregnant who didn't really want to be pregnant, miscarries, and now feels freed by that. And I was getting specifically this to the Aquarian energy, um, who opens up to the future now, discovering instead of, uh, dealing what they were just dealing with, whether it was a pregnancy or something else that ended, they're now excited to go towards the future, discovering their own psychic abilities. And I wasn't getting this as the divine feminine. I was getting this as a karmic. Could be the divine feminine as well, though. I was also getting celebration at the full moon, healing, dreams coming true, or just dealing with an Aquarius at the full moon. Okay. Also, news of Aquarius in mourning, loss of a child and or dreams come true. I was getting a, the Queen of Wands, which is this karmic Sag Aquarian energy, um, was happy and the King of Swords was unhappy. But him also could just not be in his truth. But they weren't getting along. They weren't seeing eye to eye. Um, I was getting union energy or a home needs clarity to see the light. So maybe it just needs a cleanup or literally just needs, you know, more psychic, intu intuitive clarity, or just more someone seeking more information about a home. They don't feel like they have enough home uh, information to buy a home, things like that, or to sell a home. Also family burden. Family may feel burdened to open their hearts to the twins' psychic abilities, or it even could be kids' psychic abilities. But it was this, all of this information for the whole read was about family. There was definitely a big loss here, whether it was a death or a loss of a marriage or a business or a miscarriage, okay? Those were the things that were coming up. And it really wasn't that much about the Divine Feminine today. It was about everything that's going on around them. Although this could be happening also to the Divine Feminine. But it wasn't the energy. I actually even clarified the... Uh, the Queen of Swords in the middle, asking who it was, and I was definitely getting it was the Queen of Wands reversed in this position, okay? Okay, so those are the reads. I'm going to pull some um, Oracle cards for you. Um, all right, so today is the 20th. I believe it is the Page, yes, yeah, the Page of Cups. The Page of Cups and the Judgment card, okay, so today's final judgment, um, but also the Page of Cups, which is that really pure, innocent love. So judging with a pure heart, maybe it's that sweet Cupid judgment. 
So for the twins, and take a deep breath, guys, okay? For the Ascension deck, what is the guidance for the true twins? What is the guidance? For the true okay. The two cards came up, and the bottom is the cosmic heart, number nine, which is compassion. Okay. The affirmation for that reads, I am the cosmic heart, which is your, you know, your connection to the etheric realms. And it talks about pure, unconditional love, which is the page of cups. I'll read it to you. The card invites you to open your heart fully and tune into the love radiating from Venus, which is the heart center of the universe. Pure, unconditional love is held within Venus at the ninth dimensional frequency, a higher frequency that we can currently access. The angels are suggesting you find time today to call on Mother Mary or the unicorns. With their help, you can step down this powerful but gentle love to a level that you can handle and bring it into your heart center. Breathe in love from the cosmic heart and radiate it outwards to everyone every day. And the affirmation is, I am the cosmic heart. And at the time, I don't know when these cards were made, but I know people who definitely are accessing the ninth dimension. So that may no, no longer be true. But that was number nine. That was the underlying energy. The cards that came out are Elmoria 44, which is Atlas, the weight of the world upon your shoulder, your shoulders. And Paul the Venetian, which is 37, which is the King of Cups. Okay. Um, 44 is also the Four of Cups. So it's, Four of Cups is about, you know, not getting what you want, so feeling sorry for yourself, but it's also about being bored, and it's also about um, not seeing the good in what you have, but it's also not seeing your worth and not wishing for something greater. But I also mostly see it as um, grounding and integrating. You know, you're sitting at a tree, and you're bored because it's time to ground and integrate. It's not time to go forward. Okay. So El Moria, the 44 card, says El Moria is Koan of the first ray of action. He is helping us with the changes ahead and our opportunities for ascension. He is a member of the White Brotherhood and originates from Mercury. El Moria will soon become the Manu, the perfected man on whom the new root race of humanity with its 12 strands of connected and active DNA will be based. In drawing this card, you're asked to lead by example, employing the self-discipline, strength, and integrity of an ascended master. You're reminded to use your power for the highest good, and the affirmation is, I stand in my power. Okay, so it's just very important for all the twins to stand in your power. Always. Um, 37, Paul the Venetian. The great master Paul is koan of the third ray. He lifts people's spirits and sets their souls free to create beauty and inspiration through music and art, and also in practical ways. This card encourages you to communicate your essence by writing, painting, or in any heartfelt manner. Call on master Paul to help you express your visions and he will co-create them with you. These visions will hold such light that people will be touched by them, thereby accelerating the plan for earth. Paul carries the flame of liberty and is helping to set you free. Okay. So I'm going to remind you too, the flame of liberty, there is an etheric um, altar from Atlantis that lies above the Statue of Liberty. So if you ever feel like placing your attention there to, to pick up what you feel, the affirmation is, I express myself creatively and harmoniously. You might want to pick, pick up on, you know, Italian and French artwork. That's very much resonates with Paul. And again, it's the third ray. It's three is of joy and getting together and celebrating. And that's very much what was coming up in the read today about celebration. What do we do when we celebrate? We use music and art and creativity. Okay. I express myself creatively and harmoniously. And it is the king of cups of unconditional love. So really beautiful energies being called to be in our strength. You know, and that the 
uh, Maury was saying, I stand in my power and spirit's connecting with me because 44 is Atlas. It's the weight of the world upon your shoulders. It's being strong enough to hold that weight, the angels. And then Paul, Paul the nation is the king of cups, the unconditional love. You know? The two together are pretty unbeatable. All right, so for the past life deck, okay. Clear and align. Clear and align. Take a deep breath. Let it out and focus on any discomfort in your body to release it. Just allow it to be. Love it. Ask what it needs to feel loved. Take a deep breath and let it out. Okay, and this is for the true twins. What is the advice for the true twins today? What is the advice for the true twins? The bottom is monk or nun, so the underlying energy okay, is about having t taken vows, so don't restrict yourself. Okay, That's a block. And the cards that came out are forgiveness, perfect, and persecution and inquisition comes up again. Okay, which is all about judging. So both things came up today, judgment and forgiveness. Are you going to judge or are you going to forgive? The others and yourself. Okay, the persecution and inquisition is, you know, she's hanging um, like Jesus was on the cross. And then freedom of it. I mean, look at her. If you put these side by side, look how well they go together. Oh, I never know which way to turn. Okay, so we have her looking to the freedom of forgiveness. Okay, and that was actually, I'm being guided to tell you again, the message I had received when I was in, um, when I was in France. We went to the Cathars Cathedral where they were slaughtered by the Catholics way back when. And actually, it was interesting because last year, the year I went there, was the year the Catholics actually um, apologized to the Cathars. So when we were there and we were finished hiking, and we were, we were going to have a picnic down on the blanket at the bottom of the hill. Um, we were just all laying there head to head meditating for a few minutes. And I got a message from Jesus that day. And the message was, Look to the sun and to the butterflies. And why would you keep your eyes closed when there's all of this to see? So, and it was coming from his time on the cross. So when you use your abilities and spirit's connecting with me and you disconnect from your pain, this is what he was saying. You know, why would you want to check out when there's all of this to see when in your present moment? Okay. So that's a really nice message. That was a really nice message when I got it as well. And the, ne the next morning, we picked a card every day, and I got the uh, crucifixion card. And in that deck, I think it was the, uh, I think it was the Mary Magdalene deck. Um, that crucifixion card is all, it's all tree lined with the sun in between the trees, and that's exactly like when I was getting my message. It was like confirmation that that was the message. Okay, so for the journey of love, clear and align. Okay, for, for the true twins, take a deep breath. What's the message for the true twins today? What is the message, God? coming. And the bottom of the deck is falling. And we're in the fall, aren't we? And it's just a feather, and I found a feather yesterday. I almost forgot to tell you. I found a little baby white feather out on the grass when I went out to ground my feet yesterday morning. Falling. And it's number 14, which is temperance, which is all about patience and moderation. Okay, and it's very pure. It's a purification, the fall. Okay, that's what I'm getting from that. 
the underlying energy. And then the becoming is the card that came out. Okay, and that's number 34, which is the which is the Eight of Wands, which is that uh, expressing your feelings, passionate energy, arrows of love, you know, talking back and forth on the internet, all that kind of stuff, that physical um, exchange. But when I looked at this too, I was kind of seeing a feather. And the colors, I really love to have the colors, the blues and the greens together, one of my favorite combinations. There's a lot, there's yellow and orange and green and that throat color blue. There's a little bit of indigo in there. Blend it in. So using all of your chakra energies and always infusing a little bit of your psychic abilities into everything you do. It says... Becoming, number 34. Yes, you are manifesting your divine purpose. Yet what is happening now is just one of many inspired brushstrokes on the canvas of your life's work. You are the artist who paints with trust, instinctive and spontaneous, with faith in the process unfolding. You are not the painter using numbered squares, who has a finished vision even before commencing the task, with a map for all the steps of the journey. Your lack of plan renders you open and receptive to divine direction. You are capable of being moved by spirit, and spirit's still connecting with me. You are a brave adventurer. So celebrate what you are creating now and realize it's a step in your, of your major work of divine art. This life is yours, not to be planned, but to be experienced. Stroke after stroke, step after step, you shall witness the picture coming to life. It may not be what you expected, but it will be the most beautiful, extraordinary creation. This oracle brings you comfort that you are blossoming and each petal unfolding is another step closer to your ultimate divine fulfillment. There is a message here too, that a relationship or project that you are keen to move forward will bloom in its own unique way. Give it breathing room and be willing to let it become what it seeks to be. Even without a clear direction or plan, sometimes even because of that, there is an inner plan that can come to fruition. So if you keep your, if you keep your ske schedule so booked, you're not leaving any empty spaces for something unexpected to come in, okay? And the poem reads, Take heed, my friend, for time is ticking fast. Illusion grand in hopes this dream will last. Such memories we keep for days to come. A looking glass that only shows what's done. It would be sad to think there's nothing more in Spirits Connecting. A well-worn path reflecting what's in store. God's gift was not that days would be the same. Each dawn's first light would sing a fresh refrain of light and cloud to bathe the earth's surprise. With change of foot to stop would be unwise. A palette rich awaits the artist's brush, creating life at one with God's soft touch. Okay. So this is about letting go and surrendering, right? Because when we control, we try to plan everything about our day and our week and our, our year. And instead, it's, you're as being asked to let go of that control and surrender. Allow your guidance to guide you. Um, when you're feeling guided, then do what you're guided to do. And when you're not being guided, that's time to integrate and be still. And to trust yourself in that. Okay? And you can practice that, you know? Stay still as long as you can. Have you ever been able to stay still without ever being inspired to get up and do something? Even about uh, cleaning house, I always say this. You know, we, there's days when you do not want to clean the house, so don't. There will always be a day where you're inspired to clean up. Even if it's because you've left the dishes in the sink for a week. <laughs> Hopefully that's not the case. But still true. When you need to be inspired to do something, you are. And you're going to be inspired to do things you never expected. So leave yourself open to that and trust. Follow your own guidance. You're more powerful than you realize. Okay. Make sure you drink your water. Be good to yourself. Um, make sure you rest a lot too. It's been tough in these energies. And rise and be loved.